Let's give our confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Let's all greet one another. Let's give worship with a yearning heart. The title today is Let Us Spread the News of Jesus. Last week, I gave a special lecture for local pastors and ministers at LTS in Palawan, Philippines. And LTS means Leadership Training Seminar. And so I gathered the local pastors and ministers and I explained to them what the ministry should be about and how they should go about with their ministry. And RTS is the Remnant Theological Seminary where it's a theological seminary where they can receive the word constantly and receive training so that they can be commissioned out as evangelists. That's what RTS. And VTS is a vocational training school. And it's where we train for a lot of um, like deaf mute people so that they can learn different skills like um, becoming a hairdresser or becoming a barista so that they can go out into the society and get a job. And so I delivered the message of building an eternal partisan to save Southeast Asia together. And it was a time for many local pastors of the um, Philippines to join the Yewon's mission system and develop a bond to save Philippines and Southeast Asia together. And so your devotion and the um, offerings that you gave have raised up the Yewon Mission Center in Palawan. And Palawan is actually a very famous place across the world where many people go for holiday or vacation. We didn't actually know it was such a great um, field, but turns out it's a very famous holiday location. And so for the local ministers and for even commissioned um, missionaries, we wish to train the people there because it's a missions field. It's not like Korea where people are living more well off, but it's truly a missions field. And so they can really receive training there and be commissioned. And that's the kind of work that we're proceeding with. And as I was doing the training last week, there were so many motorcycles. And in Korea, motorcycles are used for delivering, like delivering food. And I thought, why are people ordering so much on delivery? And I thought, why are people ordering so much food? And as I thought that, I asked, why are there so many motorbikes here? And they said, this is the, the vehicle that the pastors use to get here. So 90% of the pastors use motorcycles there. They don't have cars. So for a couple hours, they come from far away riding these motorcycles. And so we provided the food and shelter for them while they received the training this time. And so I really thought with continuous um, training, we need to save this field. And there are many Korean pastors that have been commissioned to that field, but they're unable to continue with the church. And so around like 14 to 15 missionaries have gathered together to raise a united church. But us, it, we haven't been in the field for long, and yet we have raised up a church and raised up a building already. So many people there were very shocked. And they said, we've been doing this ministry for over 10 years or more, and we haven't been able to do much. 
But yeah, one church, you've come and you've created this chaos, essentially. That's what the missions field is like right now. It's all falling asleep. They're all... It's all a dead field. But we, we are open and we say you can come whenever you like. You can receive training wherever you like. Just don't be an obstacle. And so I delivered a message urging to establish a firm 237 mission system by aligning themselves to the spiritual flow of our main church, which is carrying out the movement of the team of three. And so the title of today's sermon is, Let Us Spread the News of Jesus. So essentially, I went to the Philippines last week and spread the news of Jesus. And it's currently the Lunar New Year holiday. And some people have already been to their hometowns and come back. And actually, I thought today there might not be many people at church. There might be only two-thirds of the normal amount of people we have. But it turns out there's not much difference. I guess everyone already went and came back. Maybe there are some that are still in their hometowns. And for those of you who visited your hometowns, I'm sure you spread the news of Jesus to them. I'm sure you didn't just eat the food, but I hope that you spread the news of the gospel that's inside of you. And those who are still in your hometowns, it's not too late now to spread the news of Jesus. There's nothing difficult about it. You just have to spread the news of Jesus. How do you do that? All you have to do is naturally testify about your life before you believed in Jesus. What kind of religious life did you lead? And how did you change after believing in Jesus? And you can say, you saw how I changed. Just give your testimony about that. How you have changed before and after believing in Jesus. And we divide history by B.C. and A.D., before Jesus came, after Jesus came. You just have to do that for your life as well. Your life B.C. and A.D. Same with Paul. It was before Damascus and after Damascus. Don't try to give a message, but really just talk about what you experienced. Just honestly share the difficulties you had before believing in Jesus and the testimony of your healing and restoration and the grace you received. And really, those stories will be planted in the other person's soul if you're honest about it. And people can think, oh, that person really has changed. Even just that, and you've already touched the heart of that other person. You don't have to tell them to come to church right away. You just have to make sure that they are touched and hear the news. Many people ask questions about how to live a walk of faith and what a biblical walk of faith is. And there's only one answer I can give. What is a good walk of faith? How do you live a walk of faith so that your faith grows? There's only one thing. It is to spread the news of Jesus. It's okay if you do not know very well, but just spread the news of Jesus. And strangely, you will be the first to be healed. You will be healed and then your faith will grow. So spreading the news of Jesus in the area where I live, the natural meetings that you have. So maybe you might go for a hike in a nearby mountain and you meet people or where you work and where you study with your, ch with your friends. You just have to spread the news of Jesus there. It's not something that's forceful, but it happens naturally. And that can really touch the other people. Something that is not forcefully discovered, but just someone that you they already knew, someone that you already would greet normally. And that's our duty as children of God, and it's what pleases God the most. 
You might think, how can I please God? How can I make God pay attention to me? There's only one thing. Spread the news of Jesus. Everything is within that. That's the expectation God has from us. God expects that God will be proclaimed through us and that God will receive glory through us. And in fact, spreading the word about Jesus in the field where you live, I guess nationally, is evangelism. And going to areas with different cultures is the work of missions. It's the same thing. It's spreading the news of Jesus. So let's all confess, confess together. Let us spread the news of Jesus well. And greet one another again. Let us spread the news of Jesus well. And the word rumors literally means words that are heard through people's mouths. So words that are relayed through other people's mouths. However, within these rumors, some of them are true, but some of them might be made up and wrong. Some people might be proclaiming these wrong rumors. And these days, we have a lot of speculative articles. And a lot of the times, those things make other people perish. And there are very negative approaches. So you must be aware of people who are very good at relaying those negative rumors. And so instead of the word that saves people, there are people that are so good at listening to words that may affect others negatively, and they're so good at relaying those kind of rumors. The AI has advanced so much these days, and they can make these um, videos, and sometimes it looks exactly the same as real life. That's what's going on right now, where fakes seem so real, and so there may be a lot of um, repercussions so that people cannot receive grace because of those rumors. And what about celebrities who have such a hard time? Because there are people who do the wrong things of attacking those people. And it's not something that gives grace. If it's not something that helps people receive grace, even if it's true, do not relay it to other people. Why would you talk about those things? It's just running errands for Satan. And those kind of people, they won't be joyful, they won't have peace, they won't have blessings. And those kind of people, if they're within the church, they cause a lot of disruption. That's why the churches of Korea, the churches of this entire world is like this. Because those people are really good at talking. And that's why I always say, I'm not really, I don't really like people that are too good at talking. Because most of the time, they will be people who talk rashly about everything. So if you will spread a rumor, then I hope you spread the news of Jesus that saves, the news that heals others and raises up others. How great is it to hear those things? And it's truly unfortunate, and we should live a life that spreads rumors that really saves lives and not the life-killing rumors. And we must proclaim Jesus is the Christ, the solution to all problems. In today's passage, there is an account of a woman who actually heard these rumors about Jesus and was blessed with amazing healing and restoration. So I bless all members of Yewon Church in the name of the Lord to accurately grasp the essence of life that spreads the news of Jesus and become field evangelism disciples who build an eternal partisan to save lives in the field through today's word. And especially any people suffering from illnesses that are giving worship today really have the same kind of desperate heart like the women in the scripture and receive the works, the miracle of healing. The first point, starting point of healing and restoration. And as we looked 
last Sunday, through the pop-up message, Jesus healed the demon-possessed man of Gerasene, a land of Gentiles. Then he crossed over to the other side, to Galilee. And immediately upon arrival, a large crowd gathered around him. And at that moment, one of the very, very famous synagogue leaders named Jairus came to Jesus, kneeling at his feet, pleading for him to come and heal his dying daughter by laying his hands on her. And so he asked for Jesus' salvation. And at that time, Jesus knew who this man was. And since this man was so desperate and pleading, Jesus accepted Jairus' request. And as they were making their way to his house, a particular incident occurred. And that's the incident in the scripture today. Verses 25 to 26 reads, And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. The woman mentioned in the passage today suffered from a disease. And this disease, simply put, is one where blood is irregularly discharged apart from regular menstrual periods. And so she had suffered from this disease for 12 years. And among the Israelites, the number 12 symbolized completeness. In other words, it indicated the utmost despair of this woman. So it was a state of having no hope whatsoever. So she had tried everything in her power to cure her illness, but to no avail. She was not healed. And instead, her condition worsened and she lost all her wealth. And now, she was in a state where she had to wait for her inevitable death. What's even more tragic is that this woman had to live a completely isolated life. Because this disease that she had, as mentioned in Leviticus chapter 15, was considered an unclean disease. And in the Old Testament, there were two diseases that resulted in isolation from the community. It was leprosy and the disease mentioned in the passage today. So lepers and those with this disease couldn't live as normal members of the community. They had to completely leave the city. Even touching someone with these diseases was considered unclean. And that's why they were cast out. And they couldn't even give worship. They were forbidden from entering the temple. And even if their husband divorced her, she couldn't appeal to it. And ultimately, she faced complete rejection from her family and lived in utter loneliness. And so, looking at the spiritually, this woman reminds us of a human being who was separated from God. After the sin of the first man, Adam, in Genesis chapter 3, all humans have fallen into sin, wandering within the 12 spiritual problems, but they do not even know that. They do not know where happiness is, and they cannot reach it, and then they inevitably head towards eternal destruction. That's the fate. However, because humans are spiritual beings, they show some instinctual responses to escape from this fate. And what is that? The, those are the various superstitions and idol worship. And some people fall into trying to do good deeds. Or some people might go into philosophy or religion. However, this, the unfortunate reality is that these efforts are in vain. 
And just like the women in the passage today, the more one tries, the worse the condition becomes. The more one tries to heal, the worse it becomes. Because no human effort can solve the three major problems of mankind, the problem of separation from God, the problem of sin, and the problem of Satan. This is the fate and destiny that is cursed. And only through Jesus Christ can this cursed destiny be resolved. There's only Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, truth, and life, and no one should come to the Father except through me. And Acts chapter 4, verse 12, there's no other name that has been given to mankind. Only Jesus Christ is the key to solving all problems of mankind. And I emphasize this point during my special lecture at LTS. The reason for this is because the Philippines is a Catholic country. And so no matter where I go, there are statues of Mary. And in fact, salvation cannot be obtained by following Catholic doctrine. The only mediator is Jesus Christ. But they call Mary the Holy Mother. And they claim that she is their mediator and they pray in the name of Mary no matter what Catholic temple you go into you will see statues of Mary and even my apartment building there's a Catholic um, statue of Mary by the entrance and in the Taejeon region, there's a very large festival for Mary. And the ascendant, ascending of Mary. Does it ever mention the ascending of Mary in the Bible? Where does it say that in the Bible? So when I was giving my special lecture at LTS, because the pastors and ministers there they grew up in Philippines so they don't know how severe this problem is how severe it is the idol worship towards Mary is and they say that Mary does not have original sin and they say that she is their mediator In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, Apostle Paul declares, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. It says, the man Christ Jesus, there's only that one person. And yet people, even those who see the Bible, read the Bible, they cannot realize this. So Christ Jesus, who is mankind, but also God. That's the ultimate condition of salvation. And so Christ is the only mediator and the only way of salvation. There's no other way. There's no other way to receive salvation, and yet people say that Christianity is so selfish. But there's no other way uh, about it. That's what the Bible proclaims. But Catholicism prioritizes authority over this absolute truth of the Bible. And so they have the Pope. And the Pope is just another man. And so the religion of Catholic is simply put just like the Buddhism of the Western world.
So when the um, late um, President Park passed away, the different people from the uh, religions like Buddhism and Catholic and Christianity, they came forward to commemorate that death. And Buddhism and Catholic Catholicism, they did the same thing, the, the same ritual. Their ceremonies were closely resembled. So believers, if there's anyone in your family who's still within the Catholic religion, you must proclaim Jesus Christ. Give them the gospel. And people that believe in the Catholic religion, they might be very kind. In a way, looking at their life, they may be uh, kinder or more ethical than you. However, you must realize that you must be really touched by the salvation that you have received with the gospel through Jesus Christ. And that's why people who have really lived a difficult past and received the gospel and salvation, they have a drastic change. And yet some people, they've been going to church for a long time, but they don't have any sense of what kind of salvation they have received. They have never been a non-believer, so they don't even know what the state of the non-believer is. They haven't even experienced spiritual problems. And so, some people are very lukewarm as they live their walk of faith. Let's look at verse 27. A glimmer of hope Verse 27 reads, She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. And so the only glimmer of hope that came to that woman living in despair and isolation was the fact that she heard about Jesus. And so the fact that she heard about Jesus became a drastic turning point in her life. And so the four Gospels frequently record that the first step of receiving healing from Jesus begins with hearing. So they heard about Jesus. That's the first step. And the word hearing come, uh, comes out very often in the Bible. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, also says, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. So hearing is the beginning of having faith. So hearing about who Jesus Christ is marks the starting point of healing and restoration. There are two notable Christians res representing Japan, and it's Uchimura Kanzo and Kagawa Toyohiko. And while Uchimura Kanzo is well known to us, Kagawa Toyohiko may be unfamiliar. And he was so famous in Japan to the point that he was even called a saint. But originally, Kagawa Toyohiko, this pastor, was actually the child of a mistress. And therefore, he received all kinds of scorn and contempt from his stepmother and siblings. And that was the case back in the day. They didn't even treat these children as people. And so he grew up with many scars from his childhood and grew up resenting his parents. And I also have a friend who is the child of a mistress, and I didn't know that. That person was, this friend was really good at fighting. And while we were in school, there was no one in that school who had not been hit by that friend. So he was a really good fighter. And I said, why are you so good at fighting? And the friend said, because he's been boxing since he was in middle school. And the reason is because he wanted to kill his father. He started to learn boxing because he wanted to kill his father. And so he had a lot of anger inside of him. And 
And whenever we go, he would kind of act upon that anger, even when we were buying things or even when we were buying food. And so I would be kind of embarrassed to go about with them. So you can just nicely say, how much is this? And yet he wouldn't do that. And so I said, why are you like that? And so he had a lot of anger inside of him. And so you didn't want to be on the wrong side of him. So just because he was a child of a mistress, he had so much anger inside of him. And I thought, oh, he has such a big scar. And so, same with Toyohiko, he had a lot of scars and resentment. But one day, while contemplating his life, he heard the Salvation Army preaching while beating their drums and playing the trumpets. And as they passed by him, they shouted, God loves everyone. God loves anyone. That's what they said. And so these words pierced Kagawa Toyohiko's heart as soon as he heard them. And so he thought to himself, God loves everyone and anyone? And so he approached them and asked, does God love everyone? And they said, yes. And he asked, does God even love the child of a mistress? And they said, yes, God loves everyone regardless of those things. And so hearing these words, his heart melted completely. And that day he believed in Christ Jesus. And after that, he studied theology and studied abroad in the United States at Princeton Theological Seminary. And he's a very famous pastor. And during the era of President Lee Seung Man, he came to Korea and was the very first Japanese to apologize for Japan's invasion of Korea. So believers, we must recognize that unbelievers in the field live in anguish over such easily solvable problems. And moreover, it's not about delivering eloquent speeches to make one change. All we have to do is spread the news of Jesus. We may be weak, but Jesus is complete. I may be weak, but the Jesus I believe in is complete. You just need to spread the news of Jesus. May you all become true believers of Year One Church that deliver this truly bliss news of joy in the name of the Lord. Point number two, the news of Jesus that must be spread. Verses 27 to 29 reads, she had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I e touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. We see how one woman who was once hopeless and just waiting for the day to die was completely healed and found new hope after meeting Jesus. However, we must look at the starting point of how she received complete healing. The reason she was able to become healed is because she heard the news of Jesus. Someone had told her about Jesus and how Jesus could heal all diseases and Jesus could cast out demons. There was a witness that delivered that news. And because she had heard this news and she had the faith that if it's that kind of Jesus, then she could also be healed. 
If he can truly heal all those diseases, then of course I can be healed too. She developed a faith after hearing the news. And when she heard the news that Jesus was passing through her village, she went to see him and took an act of faith. And she had faith that she would be made well even if she only touched Jesus' garment. She wasn't like the synagogue leader who boldly came before Jesus and pleaded to him. She didn't have the authority or position to do that. And she would have thought, there's so many people here, I cannot approach Jesus in front of all these people. All I have to do is touch Jesus' garment. It's really astounding. And the Israelites at the time, it wasn't the kind of clothing that we wear now. And they would all wear slippers because it was a lot of sand on the ground. And then they had a lot of clothes um, that were just kind of flow behind them. And so just touching that garment behind Jesus, she had faith that she would be made well. This is not an ordinary touch. It is a touch of faith. It's not an ordinary worship. It's a worship of faith. And through that channel of faith, Jesus power flowed and performed the works of healing. And Jesus himself proclaimed this faith. He said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And I hope you also hear the same voice. That's, this is the form of someone who has met Jesus through faith. They will be physically and spiritually restored. And they can truly enter a life that tastes true peace. A similar incident to today's passage is also found in Joshua chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. It's the incident when Rahab meets the two spies. So the two spies were in danger of being arrested. And so there was quite a commotion and they said, there are spies, we must capture them. And Rahab in that important moment hid them. She hid them and then she lied and said that she saw them go in a different direction. And then she says, This is what Rahab says to the spies. I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of, kings of the Amorites who were beyond Jordan, to Sion and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. So Rahab says that she heard, she heard what God had done. She heard what God had done and she truly believed that he was the living God. And although the people in Jericho, their hearts also trembled in fear and they were shocked out of their minds, but they still had no thoughts regarding God. They only focused on the visible outcomes and they were just shocked by those outcomes. However, only Rahab turned her attention to God. God who performed those outcomes. God who split the Red Sea and she believed only God can do those things. She focused on the living God and truly believed in that living God. She made an amazing confession for the Lord your God. He is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. It's truly an amazing confession for an unbeliever and a Gentile. 
So Rhea believed in God who was in the heavens above and the earth beneath, and she received salvation. Not only did she save her whole household, but she also received an amazing blessing by being included in the genealogy of Jesus. There were so many people living in Jericho at the time, but only Rhea alone received salvation. Not just receiving salvation alone, but she was in the genealogy of Jesus. She was the grandmother of David. What is important is that Rahab and the women who suffer from the disease in the scripture today, they heard the news of Jesus and they believed. So believers, I hope you believe in the pulpit message. It is the word of God. We do not know who will believe. We do not know who will receive healing. God will do those works. All we can do is open up the path for them to come forward to Jesus. And the woman who suffered from the disease was able to have faith because someone spread the news about Jesus. We must carry out the mission of spreading the news of Jesus. We must believe in the word of God as well. Truly believe. Just like the faith that touching the garment alone would heal her, we must have the same faith that coming before God and giving worship to God will ha give us the same kind of answers. So after hearing the news and being healed, we must now go forward and spread the news. That's the mission we have. That's the Team of Three movement. That's the bone of flesh evangelism. So I bless all believers of Yeowon Church in the name of the Lord to go all in and fully focus here to experience the living works of God. Really apply the word and see how God fulfills it. This is the conclusion. If we were to express the faith of the bleeding woman from today's passage, in other words, it could be described as earnestness or yearning. And so this kind of earnestness and desperation she had towards Jesus was different from others. So is it all the same faith? Is it all the same worship? Is it all the same prayer? It's not. It depends on how much desperation you have. We're all sitting here together, all giving worship together, but those who have that desperation, they have a different gaze. They have a different way of giving worship. Really, look at the students in school who are better at studying. Those who are good at studying, those who are not good at studying, they're different. The people who really receive restoration and healing before God, they are different. Their focus is different. The intensity of the grace that they receive is different. And therefore, the way they look at the field is different. The way they look at people is different. And the way that they devote themselves to the roles that they have been appointed in within the church is different. I hope you re really receive grace. And I really hope you have the determination and resolution to live the life of spreading the news of Jesus. And I bless in the name of the Lord that all Yewon believers may build the eternal partisan of Jesus Christ as you spread the news of Jesus with a spiritual earnestness for saving lives. Let us pray. Living Father God, this woman who was suffering from an illness for 12 years where no method of the world worked and was just awaiting her death we saw how she had the faith of touching Jesus' garment would heal her 
Please let our Yewon believers also have the same desperateness as they go forward and worship and let them really experience healing and restoration. And let them live as the field evangelists who devote their remaining lives to spreading the news of Jesus. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.